Kellogg's. I told you. I can tell. Doing great things. Doing great things. Mr. Kellogg's. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Councilmember Ben Kalos. You can find me on social media at Ben Kalos. I have the privilege of representing 168,000 people on the Upper East Side, uh, Roosevelt Island, East Midtown, and I couldn't be prouder to represent East Harlem on Community Board 11. Uh, before we get started, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge the victims of natural disasters that have occurred recently. Sure, all aware of the deaths that were attributed to Hurricane Dorian that hit the Bahamas. And if you can uh, join me in a moment of silence. tragic events that we've seen in the news recently and that we see year in, year out, serve as a reminder of how important it is to be prepared in emergency scenarios. Hurricanes, fires, earthquakes, and man-made tragedies are just some of the reasons that we have to be ready on the local level to respond. With that in mind, I'm so glad we're here together tonight as we come to this year's emergency preparedness event to learn from the experts how to prepare for these unexpected emergencies. I'd like to thank Mount Sinai for hosting this event. Can we give them a round of applause? Yes. <laughs> Mount Sinai continues to be an indispensable part of this community and a great team uh, for a lot of us here. It's where my daughter was born. It has uh, got a special place in my heart. I'd also like to thank uh, Harlem Cert team uh, for being here tonight, for helping with check-in, for tabling, and uh, we hope to have somebody from the Harlem CERT team talk about CERT, how much they enjoy the experience, and then we'll also learn about how you can join uh, the CERT. Is anyone already part of their community emergency response team? Anyone in the room already? Well, you'll have a thank you. We have one. Perfect. So uh, hopefully uh, you'll learn about that. I also want to mentioned that we are joined uh, tonight by uh, Bishop, uh, the Deputy Public Advocate for Infrastructure and Environmental Justice for uh, Public Advocate, uh, Jamani Williams. Oh, we can welcome him for being here tonight. <laughs> Before I welcome up our first speaker, I'd like to take this moment to invite you all to the first Friday. On the first Friday of every month from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., you can join me in my office and have a conversation with your me and neighbors about whatever you want. Uh, we do it every month unless it's a national holiday uh, or a national emergency or a religious holiday, but uh, you're welcome to join. The next one will be on Friday, October 4th. If you have an idea for public policy, for something that might be a well suited to become a law, you can join us for policy night by appointment. It's on the second Tuesday of every month. It's uh, in my office at 93rd Street. Uh, and just some uh, ground rules. Uh, based on what I'm seeing in this room right now, I believe every single person here, including those who are on the wait list, and even some of you who may not have RSVP, will get a go back tonight. Oh, so that's that's nice. good. You must stay here for the entire event to get your go back. <laughs> The reason is there's a lot of great stuff in there, but they're incomplete. And I would feel guilty if I let you go home thinking you had everything you needed, but you didn't participate, didn't hear the presentation, and then therefore were actually at greater risk because you thought you were taken care of. So uh, that's one piece. Uh, in about 10 or so minutes, that's going to be the last call for folks who are coming. So sometimes folks text and say, hey, they might have extra bags, and then folks show up at the end of the event and they get very unhappy that they can't have a go back because they missed the presentation. 
so if folks aren't here in the next uh, 10 or so minutes, it's going to be too late. We do this every year. We may also do another one this year. Another key piece, I've been doing this for six years. I've been a council member for uh, five years, nine months, 23 days, and uh, 18 hours, 24 minutes, and 13 seconds, but who's counting? And every year people stand up to get their go back. And there's about 100 of you or so, and that's a long wait. Uh, so what I'm going to ask you to do, and we're going to ask the search team to help, is just hang out, relax, stay seated, get to know your neighbor, uh, and we will come to you row by row to hand you your go back. Uh, that's it. Just stay where you are. We'll work our way from the front of the room to the back of the room. So if you're eager, now's your chance to move to the front of the room. Uh, if, you, if you have to leave for whatever reason, you can leave. You just won't have to go back. But we will come to you. So just stay seated. We'll come to you. It will work much better that way. Um, if you haven't already, please consider signing up to our newsletter. There's lots of events happening this Saturday at sundown at uh, uh, the, the park on 96th Street. Seabury Park is going to be uh, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. It's going to be an outdoor theater. It's a lot of fun. It's a great way to spend a date night. Uh, and uh, if you don't have a date, it's a good excuse to find one. Uh, so uh, I'd like to now introduce the New York City Emer Emergency Management Commissioner, Jeanne Griswold, who's here tonight with Deputy Commissioner for External Affairs, Christina Farrell. Uh, if you could please join me in welcoming the Commissioner. Well, good evening, everybody. Good evening. And thank you very much, Councilmember Kalos, for inviting me and my team here to join you in this annual event. I know everybody's been looking forward to getting their go back, and I can't wait to give them out to you. First, as he stated, we'll have a few bits of information for you. Um, right now, it is September, and it's National Preparedness Month. And as we're standing here today, or sitting here today, we're still in the peak of Atlantic hurricane season. There are currently three active storms, named storms in the Atlantic. None of them have any direct threat to New York City at this time. But it's a good time and a good reminder that hurricane season is not over. It goes through the end of November, and as we might recall, we're coming up on the anniversary of Superstorm Sandy, which happened at the end of October. So we can still have a major hurricane that could potentially impact New York City um, before the end of hurricane season. And with dangerous storms, as the councilman men mentioned, uh, such as Hurricane Dorian, we saw devastating damage and destruction to the Bahamas. And so with that, it's a reminder for all of us that we should talk to our families, we should talk to our loved ones about what we should do to be prepared, where to go, how to stay informed, how to stay in touch during an emergency. Um, and again, in addition to all of those storms, even in the Atlantic, we also saw one in the Gulf of Mexico last week that brought some devastating flooding to the Texas region again, still trying to recover from Hurricane Harvey that hit a couple of years ago. So as September is National Preparedness Month, we, wanted to, we want you to make it your mission to stay prepared and have an emergency plan. Um, some things that we have done to help prepare New Yorkers during hurricane season and National Preparedness Month is we've debuted a new public service <coughs> announcement in collaboration with the Ad Council. It's a really great um, ad that um, you may have seen these ads um, on bus shelters or billboards around New York City as well as being televised as commercials. The ads encourage all New Yorkers to talk with their families and develop an emergency plan before a disaster. Has anybody in here seen these new ads? All right, so I am gonna give you a challenge. Oh, we have one in the back. Make it your challenge to find these new ads and give us some feedback on them and how effective they, work at, they are. I don't know, Christina, if we're gonna show one of them here today. We're not gonna show it tonight, but we can send them. All right, that'd be great. And with that, right now, um, I am going to turn it over to Christina Farrell, our Deputy Commissioner for External Affairs, and she's going to go into even more detail on what you can do to prepare for hurricane season, what the hurricane evacuation zones are. Does everybody in here know what your evacuation zones are? You are going to learn by the time you get to go back tonight. And 
and then afterwards I will be helping Council Member Palos distribute the bags and I'll be around for any questions that you may have. Thank you very much for showing up tonight and um, turn it over to Christina. Okay. I think that this is being streamed. There are some people watching this from uh, wherever they're streaming, so we're going to go to the presentation. Uh, so thank you for having us. Thank you for uh, Councilman Kalos. And I have uh, been doing this for several years. I've seen lots of the Upper East Side and Roosevelt Island over the last five years doing this. Um, and just like the councilman, um, although I have four children here. So, uh, so this also brings back lots of memories to be here on Sinai, so thank you for hosting us. Uh, so I'm going to go through a little bit about emergency preparedness. And then, as we said, we're happy to answer any questions you may have, uh, and then get to the go back. So they'll say things to us like, oh, it's a little white pill. Um, you know, and that's 
we need a little more than that. The pharmacist, the health department needs a little bit more like that. Um, so if the information is written down, and if you have a copy of your plan, it's much easier for us to help you to get the things that you need. Um, so I would encourage everyone to go through this plan. Uh, as the councilman said, we have our start members here. They're more than happy to sit down and help you with this. We can also have our staff come up. Um, you know, if you have a group that comes together and you have some questions or some things you're really not sure of. Uh, but it, it's a really great document. And for example, my mom lives in North Carolina in a uh, coastal storm evacuation zone. And, um, you know, I realized I'm the oldest of four kids. I realized um, if something happened, I'm 12 states away. And I don't know who her doctors are. I don't know what medication she takes. Um, so one time when I went to visit her, I had her fill out the plan. I kept a copy with her. I made a copy. Uh, so if something did come up, I'd be able to help her. And then every couple of years, um, when we go down there, I look and make sure everything's updated. So, you know, and another part of emergency preparedness, and certainly something CERT is part of, is helping your neighbors, helping your friends. Uh, so once you get your plan filled out, if you have a neighbor or a family member or somebody that you know could use a little extra help, it'd be great if you could help them to fill out their plan, too. Are there any questions? Uh, so the next thing we talk about after having a plan is gathering supplies. We're going to help you get started with that tonight with your go bag. Basically, when an emergency happens, there are usually two actions you'll take. You'll evacuate or you'll shelter in place. Um, so like for a snowstorm, for example, you know, most people would shelter in place. You'll stay in your apartment or your house until it's safe um, you know, to, to come back out. Uh, if there's a coastal storm coming, if you're in an evacuation zone in the city, put down an evacuation order, you would be asked to evacuate, and so that's when you would take your go bag. If you're sheltering in place, that's when you would have the larger list of supplies. Um, again, if you go into my plan, it'll list what they are. It's all kind of common sense things. Um, it's also based on national standards. It says things like a gallon of water per person per day. Um, you know, if you live in a studio apartment, you have to adjust what's right for you, how it works for you. Um, but, you know, these are guidelines. It's important to have these things. Um, you know, stores may be closed, or there may be 300 people in line in front of you, um, so, or they may be out of uh, milk and bread or whatever you're looking for. So, you know, it's good to, to look for these things. And then also to update your supplies and update your plan. So we encourage people twice a year when you're updating, um, when it's getting to be daylight savings time, which I think is like in a month from now, um, you know, when you're checking your smoke alarm batteries, also check your go bag, check your emergency supply kit, and see um, if the batteries have died in anything. See if it's like my house, um, you know, my kids, if they hear there's $20 in the bag, they're going to go find it. Um, so, you know, we encourage you to have some cash, so do that. Um, the granola bars you put in there, you may have eaten them at some point, the water you might want to, you know, um, replace. So it's, it's good to take stock every once in a while. So if you need your emergency supply kit or your go bag, it's actually going to be useful to you and not a, a bunch of stuff that you put in a bag, you know, a bag in your closet five years ago and then forgot about. Uh, the last step, we um, ask people to sign up for Notify NYC. Are any of you familiar with Notify NYC? Great. Good. I hope by the end of the night you're all intimately familiar. Uh, so this is the city's free emergency notification system. Uh, we send out notifications all day long um, based on your preferences. So everyone signs up for citywide. So if there um, you know, was a coastal storm or something coming, everyone in the city is going to get that information. But otherwise, you can sign up for different locations. So you, can, um, you don't have to give your address. You can sign up with a um, zip code or with a um, intersection, and then you'll get information. So like this week, there are a lot of road closures with UNGA. So the people with the United Nations General Assembly, people in Midtown or even up here that are affected by that, they're going to get those notifications. People who live in South Brooklyn are probably not going to get those notifications because it's not going to be useful for them. Uh, you know, if you have children at school, if you have a work location, if your aunt lives in Staten Island and you want um, to get information about where she lives. So that's why you can sign up for several locations. Uh, and you can get the information many ways. You can get phone calls, so uh, which is very important to us because we want people that use landlines to, to still get information. Uh, so you can get actual phone calls to whatever number you put in there. You can get texts, you can get emails. Um, if you're on Twitter, you can follow us on Twitter. It's all on this card, which is outside. And you can also download an app. Uh, and one thing we're really excited about is that um, we now have notifications in 13 different languages. 
Uh, we have it in Spanish, um, in Chinese, and Korean, but then also some languages that um, may not be so common but are important uh, to people that don't speak English need it. We also have all this information available in American Sign Language. So if you get a notification, you'll see there's a link, and you can click on that, and it takes you to an ASL video, uh, which we worked with some advocates and uh, people from the deaf community, and they said that that was the way that they preferred to get the information, so we were happy to make that accommodation. Um, so, you know, it's a really great program. Um, you can set certain things on it. If you don't want to get notifications in the middle of the night, you can make that decision, although the middle of the night is probably an important time to get a notification. Um, but you can decide it, you can really personalize it yourself, so I would encourage everyone to take a look at it and, and to sign up so you can be in the know. Any questions? Uh, so I think um, I mentioned most of this as I went through that slide, um, but like we said, you know, we want everyone to have a plan, to have a network, um, you know, the fact that you're here tonight, you know, means that you're part of some network, right? You're either connected through the councilman, through the hospital, through your neighborhood association, um, you know, and those are very important during emergencies, I'm sure, as you've seen. Um, you know, we all need help from time to time. I get stuck at work, I need someone to pick up my kids. Um, you know, you're planning to take the bus, the bus isn't here, you need someone to pick you up. So, you know, having, having that can really come in handy during an emergency. Uh, and then uh, I think I mentioned some of the other things about transportation and um, communication. So does anyone know if you live in an evacuation zone? There are certainly evacuation zones uh, east of here, closer to the river. I think right here we're on pretty high ground. We're probably out of an evacuation zone. Uh, but it's, it would be surprising. Three million out of the eight million New Yorkers are in an evacuation zone, so they can go pretty far. Um, you can go to nyc.gov slash go your zone, you can call 311, um, or you can look inside this my plan, there is a hurricane map, if you like to read maps. That's very nice, I just opened it up. Awesome. Oh, cool. uh, so cool. you can look on the map um, and oh, see, you can have one. Um, <laughs> there's lots outside, there you go. Um, so, uh, so it's important to know if you're, if you're in a zone. Um, because then you will want to Thank you. prepare. Uh, this is what I mentioned about, um, you know, about go bags and about supply kits. I think, you know, outside of putting the regular information in there, the regular supplies, um, you know, something that's very important is special considerations. Like, so for example, I put glasses in my bag because I don't get very far without my glasses. Uh, if you're the type of person, also like me, who's always cold, uh, you probably want to put a sweater in there. Um, if you're packing and you're going to have uh, your kids, you know, they get bored and they get um, rambunctious pretty quickly. So you might want to have, we have Ready Girl comic books. We have our own superhero. You can throw a Ready Girl comic book in there. Or, you know, if they like Sudoku or whatever. Um, so, you know, really what, what works for you, what works for your family. Um, an important thing, too, and I know we have the guides outside, is pet preparedness. Uh, because, you know, for many of us, um, you know, we're very attached to our pets and we don't want to leave them behind. Um, and so the city has done a lot of planning around that. If you ended up going to an emergency shelter, your pet would be welcome with you. We separate them. We have um, dog cages and cat food and, you know, rabbit care, all kinds of things uh, to help with that. Um, but, you know, you also need to prepare for your pet. So um, you may want to make a small go bag or put it inside your go bag have a little toy, it's important to have their papers so you can show that your animal has had the rabies shot or whatever, um, you know, and believe it or not, my dog takes thyroid medicine, um, so, you know, I have a little bit of that or at least his prescription in the bag, so if we have to go somewhere, I can access my dog's thyroid medicine. Um, so, you know, that's important to think about your special considerations for your family, for who you'll be um, living through the emergency with, and then also if you have pets. And like I said, we have a guide outside, which um, is very similar to my emergency plan. So you can literally write the emergency plan for your pet. Um, so say you were gonna, your evacuation plan is that you're gonna go visit your cousin, uh, you know, in Albany or something. Um, you might not, you might be getting on the train, you might not be taking your dog with you. Maybe you have a friend who's agreed to take your dog. Maybe you're gonna bring your dog to the vet. So all that information can be written in your plan and um, can be part of, of what you do to prepare. 
Uh, as I mentioned, we are big fans of Notify NYC. We have about 770,000 New Yorkers signed up, which is a big program, but when you think about the 8.4 million New Yorkers who live here, when you think about the people that commute, um, that go to college, uh, you know, who have interactions in the city, there's a lot of, of room to go there. Uh, so we encourage everybody to take a look at Notify, to sign up in the way I like getting text messages, um, you know, but it, it's really important that you can get that MRT information. And, you know, sometimes it might tell you something like the 90 Strict Street subway is closed, um, just so you don't walk all the way there in the rain, and then you realize, oh, all right, that took 20 minutes, now I have to, you know, reroute a different way. So sometimes, if, you know, in addition to the big emergencies, it's just the inconveniences. Um, of living in a large city, and so you know it, it can help you with your planning with that. Um, we also put out like flyovers or things like that. So if you see something, um, you know, and you're afraid of what it might be, and then you look at Notify and you said, oh, I see that the military is doing a flyover, or I see that there's a big movie shoot going on where they're going to simulate gunfire. We send we send beach closures. We send all kinds of information, and again, you can get as much or as little as you want, um, but it can be you know really help, helpful to get that information. And then you can also share it uh, with other people who may not have access to it and who might be scared or you know might need a little extra help. Uh, as we mentioned, we encourage everyone to know your zone. Uh, so I would visit nyc.gov slash know your zone or call 311, give them your address. And once you see if you are in an evacuation zone, you can follow those steps in my plan. You're really making a plan for where you're going to go. Uh, but you know, say you make a plan to visit your family and friends who are out of the zone and then a hurricane comes a month from now, and they're on vacation, and you don't have keys to their apartment. Um, that's not a problem. You can come stay with us. Uh, we put up 60 evacuation centers across the city. Uh, they're out of the zones. They're mostly large schools. Um, and uh, you know, it's, it's congregate living. You're gonna, they're in gyms, but they're safe, they're secure. Like I said, we have a huge stockpile. We bring in pots, we bring in supplies, food, and we'll keep those open for the duration um, you know, that is needed. We open them during Irene, we open them during Sandy, uh, and we can open additional shelters. If a storm got so big that we needed more than the 60, we have satellite schools that we can open and, and we will move people to those schools. Um, so, you know, we understand if people need to come stay with us, we just encourage people if they're able to make a plan to stay with friends and family because we feel like it might be a little more comfortable. Uh, but we also, you know, from time to time, open emergency shelters if if something happens, uh, there could be a large fire, you know, and we have to vacate buildings. There have been building explosions, one not so far from here, a few years ago. Um, and so we will also open emergency shelters. Uh, we'll work with all our partners. Again, they're usually schools, uh, but that can be tricky if schools in session. So we have other facilities that we use. Um, but, you know, we will work with the Red Cross. We work with social services and the other agencies to get people um, the housing they need for the, lot, the time that they're out of their apartment um, or their house so people have a, a place to go back to. Um, so that's why it's important to have your go back uh, because hopefully if something happened with short notice, you would remember to take your go back and you'd have some of the supplies when you come to a shelter or to a center. Uh, for those that are on social media, I know we've mentioned Twitter a little bit, but we have a robust presence on Facebook. We're also on Instagram, we're on LinkedIn if you're interested in a more professional um, side of emergency management, and our commissioner also has her own Twitter site, um, at NYC EM uh, So if you want to see a little bit of a behind-the-scenes look, you can follow her. Um, and you know, we also ask people that are on social media to follow us and then to share that information, um, because it's really helpful for us. Like I said, we're 240 people. We have about 1,200 amazing CERT volunteers, um, but that's, you know, we also, when there's an emergency, we go to 12-hour shifts. So that 20, 240 people become 120 uh, since people have to actually sleep and you know shower and relax a little bit. Um, so uh, so we you know we really rely on the public to help us get our message out, and that's why we're so lucky to have CERT um, and to have people like you that take your time to come out. Uh, these are a couple of our programs. I think we've mentioned Ready New York Partners in Preparedness is a program we do with the business community and really with any organization that would like to get a little more involved in preparedness, so I'm happy to answer any questions on that. Um, and then I will finish up with CERT, which you've heard about. I think, um, I don't know if they're all outside or if any of the CERT members are in here, uh, but we have you know several dozen teams across the city. The Upper East Side and Harlem has the most teams. There's like five or six teams in this area. 
which is great. Yeah, Carol's back there. I just saw Carol Thursday at City College an event. Now she's here. I'm sure I'll see her in three days in another event. Um, but CERT Volunteers, it's a nationwide program. It came to New York City to emergency management after 9-11. It was started um, in 1986 out in uh, California to help with forest fires and things. Um, it came here and we've set up teams. We work with the community, with the community boards and with civic organizations and elected officials to find uh, New York City residents that are over 18 that are interested in helping their community. And um, they go through a 10-session training. I have to say it's a really great training. Uh, it's with firefighters, police officers, emergency management personnel, EMS uh, workers. And you know we give a lot of information on how to respond to different emergencies. We go over subway safety, high, high rise. We talk about disaster medical operations, um, many different topics in the 10 weeks. We ended up with a big disaster simulation where the CERT volunteers are the ones who are actually simulating um, how they would rescue their fellow New Yorkers and how they would help to fix the situation. Uh, and then we partner with CERT all the time. We invite them, have them at events like this. They do a lot of their own events. They've been super busy during National Preparedness Month. Um, but then they also come out during emergencies. If we open a service center, CERT's the first people we call. They come, they can help with check-ins. They've done escorts. Um, if people are out of their building and it's safe enough for them to come in and collect a couple things, uh, CERT, officer, CERT members can do it with a police officer, which is great because then it will you know, free up some other police officers or staff to do work. Um, they do traffic management at events. There's really um, you know, tons of things. They do snow measuring for us in the middle of the winter uh, if they want to go outside. So you know, they do all kinds of things and we really couldn't do all the things that we do without them. So I encourage anyone, if you're interested in emergency preparedness, to talk to the CERT members that are here tonight. Um, and they can tell you the real deal about um, what it's like to be a CERT member and, and what skills you might be able to bring. I think that's about it for now. Does anyone have any questions? Good. You just want your go to uh, so legal documents do you recommend people take it? And then, you know, how do you, how do you decide what to take? Uh, that's a very good question. Sure. Yeah. Uh, we're currently live streaming on social media. Uh, we also post our events to YouTube. Uh, so if you don't mind being recorded, please, uh, and we're also live streaming, I mentioned that when we started. So uh, if you don't mind being recorded, please feel free to ask questions during Q&A. Uh, if you prefer not to, you can feel free to stop by our desk or ask folks at one of the tables. I just want to make sure folks do that. Everything we do in the public meeting, we record everything that's available online for any of your friends and neighbors who may not have neighbor. So, I'll ask your question. Um, so that's a very good question. We um, encourage people to take make copies of their documents, so your driver's license, your passport, whatever identification you use, copies of your insurance information. Um, you know, I said your medical um, prescriptions or things like that. So not like your whole life story, but enough that if, um, if you know something happened and you didn't have your license, you would have a copy of it. Um, insurance, you know, another thing is we encourage everyone to be properly insured. Um, renter's insurance is incredibly cheap, uh, but can really, you know, literally save all your money. We go to so many fires. Uh, where you know two or three people have renters insurance, they pay like ten dollars a month, and um, you know they they can be made whole again. And uh, people that don't have insurance, it's you know it's a very hard lesson. It's very sad. Um, and then obviously if you own a home, you have a mortgage, um, you know you'll have insurance through that. But it's you know very helpful. No, I think most people know the policy numbers or even you know the phone number of the company off the top of their head. So um, copies of that information, and um, you know it also can be hot. Helpful, like I said, we have an app. Um, we end up, there are some places where you can write down your policy numbers and things like that um, within the app. Yeah. After Superstorm Sandy, I was worried about how I would carry my cats. So I got one of those pet strippers. So I, don't, I can carry other things, a backpack, whatever, and I don't have to worry about carrying them. And it makes me feel very happy to have that. Just as, it's almost like an extension of what we're doing. Yeah, I know that. To have the strollers, so I put them in and off the go. Uh, that is awesome. I, uh, I definitely encourage you know whatever things you find that work for you that you can share that makes your life a little easier. I don't have to carry it. Yeah, yeah, no, that that is definitely the way to go. Yes, sir. Well, my, my, 
No, you go. Ahead. Go 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 ahead. I was just saying, I was, when you talk about the surf program, I think that's really cool. I like it. Uh, I've done some Homeland. I've done some FEMA. And that's a big plus when you can really get the community to just band together to help out and to do their part to make things go much smoother because that's just a blessing to all the other agencies. No, and it's a big help. Yeah, definitely. And I want to know more about it. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Um, definitely go talk to Carol. Uh, talk to Joanna outside, and we can give you information. But um, you know, we really encourage. Um, it's a commitment, sir. Uh, you know, it's ten classes, and then we ask for at least a year um, commitment. But you know, we have people that have volunteered with us since the beginning, since 2003. They've been through a lot of emergencies with us. Um, and we also have programs, you know, that I can talk a little bit more about offline. But we have community preparedness programs. What you're talking about about bringing in the different groups. Um, so, you know, if you already run seven different groups, um, but you think, you know what, like, I think my Boy Scout troop could really help with this, or I think, um, you know, my church group, this sounds like something they could help others prepare. We have a whole community preparedness program um, for those that don't want to just do CERT, and we can give you more information about that. Me and this guy are military veterans, so that's just, that's nice. Yeah, um, no, that's great. We have, we have veterans, we have um, retired city workers, we have, we have 1,200, so it's like a snapshot of of New York, there's there's a place for everybody within Sarah. Yes. My question for you: the Senator Benjamin and the both y'all, we have a lot of people in our facilities are handicapped and they need this information, but they can't get here because they couldn't have transportation. How do we help them that can't come out to this open forum? Um, we would definitely be happy to talk to you about other ways if if we can go to people. Um, that is also where, where you could come in handy if, if you know people and, and you can help them. We work a lot with um, care providers. Uh, so we have a whole system called Advanced Warning System uh, that our human services unit works with. And so that is you know things like visiting nurse, Catholic charities, um, Meals on Wheels. And so we will give it, because we know that sometimes people might not be able to leave their home or might not be able to do all of this for themselves. And so we'll work with those service providers and they um, can help, you know, they, we've given out my plan and the different guys um, with Meals on Wheels and then asked the, uh, the workers to spend a little time working with, with people to do that. We also appeal to, um, you know, people's children, their niece, their nephew, whoever can help them, um, but it is a serious issue. Uh, and so we're always looking for ways that we can work with people that are homebound or that might not be able to make it to a larger event. Thank you, I'll talk to you. Yeah, yeah, talk to you. After. Else? We have to do like ten questions before they go back. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's another. That's another help. Right. Um, so we uh, we actually have someone on my team, Ed Powell, who's um, just shy of eighty, uh, but he has way more energy than I have. And he goes to senior centers all over the city. He works with Department for the Aging. Um, and he, uh, he will give a presentation. He'll you know, talk it through. We also have many CERT volunteers that are seniors um, you know, that have life experience that, that give up their time. So we do a lot of work with Department for the Aging, with naturally occurring retirement communities. But if you have a specific senior center in mind um, or some ideas, come talk to me, and we can, we can set that up. Right. You were saying something about employment. I guess it would probably be for OEM, I reckon. Uh, LinkedIn is more like our, you know, it's a, a professional. I probably can see thing. you because I've got like 31 certificates. I love it. I love it. I love it. I keep going. You sound like a certain number already. And then I'm trying to finish the MBA up. So I have the degree in management. And this stuff's awesome. I like helping people. I have the first ACPR. I have the BLS. I have the thank for the Narcon and all this other good stuff. Great. So, so come talk to me after and we can talk about Sir. I just want to get the MBA first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Finish, finish school. school. That's always important. Okay, we're going to do last call on questions. Okay, so you will get the last word. I'm looking at the map for the evacuation centers in our neighborhood here, and I don't see any on the east side. Uh, there are some on the east side. We, I can look at the map with you. Um, they have to be out of the evacuation zone, first of all. Um, and then also they need to be accessible. Uh, so some schools are older and are not by the, not by our standards, by the letter of the law. 
um, the Americans with Disabilities Act may have to be accessible. So there are some, um, you know, uh, conclusions that we have to put in place. But I, I can look at the map specifically and you know show you where we would encourage people to go. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's hear it for the deputy. Yes. Yeah. So if you can just remain seated, we will get you very, very quickly. <laughs> <laughs>